Okay, yes, I'm in a bonnet. Yes, like, comment, subscribe. I'm not going to do the whole intro thing. Y'all know I don't like that. But I want to talk about men. I haven't really made too much dating content as much as I wanted to. Let me move a little closer. Now y'all can see me. Um, As much as I wanted to, and it's just because work has been busy. Everything else in life has been busy. Um, But yes, I'm wearing a bonnet, and we will talk about this because this is cozy talk. Um, yeah, so I feel like a lot of men don't take accountability. But then also, I feel like me as a woman, now I move with men having more actions than words. And it has saved me so much energy and time. So I'll let you know how it's going and things I've experienced. So in the past, I would give men a lot of grace. Like, I naturally am just nice. I love talking to people. I love socializing. And that's it, pretty much. But I also have boundaries when it comes to myself, such as if you mistreat me, I'm going to say it. And then I would always face, I guess, the repercussions, whatever. I did say something, somebody would act really crazy or weird towards me. And yeah, it sucks, but I still say what I need to say. So with men, I've noticed, like, a lot of men from past when I was dating in the past um because now I'm not really dating but I'm exploring dating I'm just like weeding out things way quicker and I'm not wasting my time which feels good yes it may seem lonely yes you may not get a text every single day like you used to but look at the end of the day you're not wasting your time and you're not being fake so let's talk about being fake I want to talk about how you know you meet a guy online or you meet him in person all of a sudden you're texting each other every single day it feels great you're getting that morning text like every day good morning beautiful good morning good morning sunshine good morning king good morning queen you know whatever y'all saying y'all saying and you get these texts and it does feel a little bit of validation as if that is your partner and it makes you feel like wow this is the one i want to tell you now do not take those texts seriously Ever since I've stopped taking those everyday text messages seriously, ever since I've left men on red, like literally like they'll hit me up saying, hey, the next day and I won't say anything just to see if they're going to hit me up again. And if they don't, then that's not the one for you. And then also if they don't say, hey, how's it going? Are you all right? That's also not the one for you. So this is what I mean by basing things off of action and not really word. Like if somebody calls you, if somebody like checks in on you, if that's okay, like y'all have confirmation that they can go to your place or whatever and check on you, that's great. I really think I, as a woman now, focus on action more than words. I don't care about what a man says. A man can say everything and lead themselves into your pants, okay? Let's get that straight. Right? They can say everything they want and all they want to do is just get in your pants the entire time. It's frustrating that a man can't just be honest and just be like, hey, like, I just want to do this with you and that's it. Are you cool with that? Do you want that? And I'm going to be honest, when it comes to friends with benefits, it does not benefit the woman at all unless she getting some cheddar, like some big, big check that's going to pay her rent. But for me, I'm like, all right, you going to pay my rent? Sure, why not? But other than that, it really doesn't benefit you at all. It just benefits the man. Um, especially if he doesn't know your body or cares for your body at all. They just care about getting themselves off because they are super hypersexual. So back to the text messages. So I used to take these text messages very seriously. I used to feel love and warm and joy from them. And then all of a sudden, you stop getting those text messages and you feel like crap. Um, I felt like crap when I stopped getting those messages and not anymore, but when it first happened, I was like, wow, like it's so easy for you to get dropped like that just for being honest, just for telling someone they need to take accountability, just for saying, Hey, um, I don't like the way you're speaking to me. Like you notice that you put an effort into texting someone every single day and checking in on them. It makes it feel like you have a boyfriend. And I think that's really high school. I would honestly say If you're dating, checking in on somebody that you're serious about being exclusive with, I would say two times to three times a week. You really don't have to text each other every single day. I think we need to get that out of our head. That's really high school. And it's not realistic. We have jobs. We have lives. Honestly, if you want to text someone because something's wrong or you want to tell them some good news, that's great. But texting each other every single day just to say that, just to make it seem like that person loves you or that they care about you, I'm going to tell you it means absolutely nothing. Because I had that happen to me. I got those text messages every day. And trust and believe me, that relationship did not end pretty well. So what I'm trying to say is don't take it too serious. I feel like a lot of men try to make it feel like it's serious, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not saying this is 
what happened to you but i'm saying this could be a, just a general statement literally i really think this is my theory that men have literally like a mass of women that they send good morning to every single day it's never just one specifically if they are a cheater and they're a known cheater so let's get to that let's get to cheaters so i feel like I had too much grace in a past dating situation type thing where somebody who told me that they cheated on their partner and their partner cheated on them and tried to justify it. Yeah, that's not somebody you want to continue to talk to. And definitely that should have been a moment and a red flag for me when that person said that. I was thinking, all right, maybe they're taking accountability for their actions. But in reality, they were just trying to justify why they were sleeping around with other people while their partner was sleeping around with other people too. And let's not get on the fact that it's so unsafe, unsanitary, and just not caring of your partner to be sleeping around with other people and not even, not even, it's not even an open relationship it's not like y'all just decided you're gonna cheat i'm gonna cheat and that's why the cardi b and offset thing is so such delirium and bullcrap to me because i really don't think that's the way a relationship should be we should not be trying to make each other jealous we shouldn't be trying to put each other down and i feel like a lot of people are in relationships like that or they're used to that and then they get along with a healthy person like me who doesn't do that i'm not trying to make you jealous i'm just trying to uplift you and do my own thing at the same time i travel i cook i clean i do a lot of things and i'm also happy being me even when i have the most money and even when i have the less money i've ever had in my life life i'm still managing a way to be happy because this is the life that i get and i was given i'm unique and i'm me so that's another thing i noticed men can be jealous of you as a woman and that's pretty scary because i whenever someone's jealous of me i'm just like i have to have my friends tell me because i'm just like i don't understand why this person is doing this to me i didn't do anything to them blah 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 and my friends are like obviously they're jealous and i'm just like jealous of what <laughs> like i gotta pay rent i gotta pay my loans this and that i gotta look for more jobs like my life is hard <laughs> so i'm just like jealous of what and then my friends always tell me they're jealous because you still have a smile on your face after all of that you still have a beautiful smile on your face and you're still going and this is for you too like my subscribers like this may have happened to you and i want you to understand you have a beautiful smile on your face you're still going you're still like thriving and striving and people are mad about that um in itself and which is really sad but it's something that i think a lot of people need to realize it's a thing um so competition with your partner definitely partner dating situation whatever you want to call it just in a relationship somebody who has competition with you is not healthy somebody who wants to outdo you somebody who wants to post everything that they can on their stories or on their instagram or on their you know what i mean that's not healthy either like i've had a situation in the past where i really feel like a guy was trying to like outpost me he always wanted to talk about what he was doing like all of a sudden he would say like oh i'm doing this this weekend and i'm doing that meanwhile he's literally doing nothing but it really felt like he was jealous because i had a good life and good friends and no kids and i was just really kind to people like i could still manage to be kind to people and that's another thing like someone who's jealous of you because you're nice to people is not fun i learned to leave those miserable people when it comes to relationships because sometimes your friends can be like this and i'm not saying it's right but i'm just saying when it comes to a relationship certain people are just very miserable together and I'm talking about men. Like, certain men really love when another woman is, or their woman, is a nasty person. Like, I don't know how to explain this, but I'm going to try and explain it the best that I can. I've noticed that there are some men who just like a woman who's nasty. Like, a woman who hates people. A woman who puts people down. A woman who beats on everything, every situation. And... I'm not that person, but I realize that's what some people need. And I'm not saying it's okay to be that way. But I'm saying you don't have to be with someone like that. You may be physically attracted to them. You may like who they were before. But once you start realizing this person loves hate and pain, you don't need to be with them. They need to go be with someone who's going to give them hate and pain. And this is what I mean by, like, us as women realizing ourselves, like, hey, you know what? I was attracted to that guy. We hit it off, but I'm noticing... You got a couple red flags, and definitely I'm not doing this whole, let's talk about ghetto ratchetness. Yes, you want to talk about blackness, let's do it. That's another thing in black culture that pisses me off, where it's like, you need to be that hood girl. You need to be that girl that's like, you know what? 
I hate you. I'm gonna fight you. Come in. Da, da, da. Like, I, I don't. I don't need that. And maybe let me not use the term ratchet because I always talk about how I hate that. Let me just say, um, just not the best self that you could be. Let me say that because I really think as black women, we can do a whole bunch more than just do, be that term in general. Um, as y'all know, like, I feel like that's what people want to label us. And then I feel like that's what men are looking for as well. I also feel like some people have boring ass lives. Like, I feel like some men want excitement. They want a girl that is, is selling and scamming. They want a girl that is a hustler, somebody who's going to scam somebody, somebody who's going to be nasty to somebody, somebody that's not going to put themselves together. Like, you have to realize that you came across that person and that person's not for you. That's what I had to realize. And I took somebody like that out of my life and then I brought them back in on mistake because I don't know. That was, it was on purpose, but it was a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. And then I tried to say, you know what? Let me level it out. Let's just be friends. But sometimes that doesn't even work as well. Like that person in their head already has something that they want from you that you no longer want from them. So that can happen as well. And I think this is a big learning lesson for me that I should just be myself. And if I see that somebody is not loving me for me, to move on. I really had to learn that. Like, I remember thinking to myself, like, this one guy, I was just like, why does he hate me so much? Like, I couldn't figure it out. He never said he liked my photos. He never liked my photos. He made everything seem really forceful. And it literally happened after he had intercourse with me. And I just wanted him to be honest. Like, I was like, you know what? You're moving different after we had intercourse. Just be honest. We can end this right now. We don't have to do this anymore. But instead, this person wanted to prolong it so that I could still be in their pocket and no one could have me but they could and they just wouldn't touch me if that made sense like it's kind of a nasty thing for an individual to switch up on you after you have intimacy but it is a thing that men do and that's why I've taken like pretty much more caution with myself if I want to have intercourse with someone just to have intercourse with them I'm keeping them at that I'm not really gonna have any hopes that I'm having a relationship with them because at that moment if I'm giving you something like that then that's all it's gonna be and I'm walking away now that may sound weird to some people, but that's just the way I've been doing it. I've been practicing abstinence, as you guys know. But I'm going to be honest with you and say that you don't need to do that. But if you want to do that, you can. I don't think it should be a thing where it's like, you see, this happened to me. So you should be practicing abstinence. You should be practicing and celibacy. No, practice what you want to practice and when you want to practice. You never know when that moment is. But also realize that, hey, like there's certain ways you can move if you really want to be serious about someone. And also... It's pretty preventative in preventing, like, mean, evil people from, like, messing you over. I don't want to say the words because I don't want this. My channel has been getting struck down. Um, but still, I've noticed things like that. And it sucks. But at the end of the day, you just have to keep it pushing and keep doing you. Don't let no one get you down. Don't let no one say, well, you don't have a ring yet. You don't have this yet. Well, guess what? I have an apartment, a car. I'm traveling. I'm doing me. I'm working. I'm doing YouTube. My face is on the internet. I'm okay. You literally have to take a second to say that you're okay and don't look or listen to what other people have to say. Because once you start looking and listening to what other people have to say, you stop being yourself. You really stop being yourself and that's not something you want to do. That's not something you want to do. You always want to be yourself. So with that being said, I want to end this on accountability. I feel like a lot of men, not all, but a lot of men don't know how to take accountability for their actions and and just their words too that they use towards women like I've had a situation where I was trying to hash it out with this dude and come to a common ground and all he could say was how much I did and all these things that I did that I know that I didn't do but I just sat there in little delusion which was not right I should have told him he's wrong but you just know when someone's delusional you don't know what to say <laughs> you just let them go you let them speak you let them keep talking you don't really know what to say so I let him go on with his story and what he felt about me and he was saying these things that I am. But then it made me realize, I was like, this person really is eager to get back in my pants, one, and to go out with me. So I thought about that and I was like, why would I want to be around somebody like that? And who even knows if they're dating? Because I didn't even ask this person either. I didn't say, hey, are you dating anyone? How's it going? So be cautious of somebody like that too. Like there are people out there who are just renowned cheaters and it does not feel good, I'm gonna be honest with you, just just think about it if he's willing 
to be with someone else and then literally all of a sudden you're back in his life and just get into bed with you, play around with you, go out on dates with you, do this and that with you and still be a disrespectful bum. He is not the one for you because he is going to be doing that to you as well. And also just think about, give yourself a little pat on the back like, yes, uh -huh, I got it, it's that wet. But, 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 but please realize that that is not somebody that you want. Like, this is what I mean by... I want to end on this too. This is what I mean by the next person is going to get treated way worse than you got treated. Because you know why? Once that man realizes that, oh wow, some girl really caught me. Some girl really figured it out. Some girl really put the pieces together and shut me down. They're going to go 10 times worse on another female. They are going to go 10 times worse than another female. They are going to trick her 10 times worse. They are going to play with her 10 times worse. They are going to play with her feelings and play with her emotions till the day she is gone. And I also, I want to take another <laughs> note. I also thought about action when it comes to a man that I want to love me. And I really thought about it. If I'm not here tomorrow, would they even say anything? Would they check on me? Would they feel sorry? Would they even say happy birthday to me? You know, I started thinking about that. And I was like, I need somebody who is a real friend to me before they're even my boyfriend, my man, my husband, my whatever. And vice versa with the wife. I really don't think it's okay for someone just to pop back up because they want something like intimacy from you or your time or this and that and not really care for who you are what i'm trying to say is find you a man that cares for you find you a man that loves you for who you are and what you're doing and if you're not attracted to this person intimate like sexually don't pursue it if you are great don't feel like people are telling you well he has the right personality he's the one he's the one but i'm telling you if you cannot get it off in the bedroom with someone you cannot get it off in the bedroom with someone so don't let nobody trick you into believing that that's right but what i will say is have fun live life i always want people to understand that we all make decisions every single day and they may have consequences but at the end of the day these are decisions you made and a life that you live so Fuck what everyone else has to say. Do you. Like, for real. Like, I really think more people should be doing them and living the way they want to live. Yes, I'm cozy. I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> but yeah, accountability, cheaters, texters, everything, you name it. Being through it all and dating is a lot, but I'm young. And I hope that a lot of women out there know that you're beautiful you're loved you're smart you're intelligent and just because you're alone does not mean you're not worthy of love at all it just means that you are scratching out all the garbage you are doing the most to scratch out all the garbage and save yourself for the right one and i love that for you bye you guys